Okay, today we're going to talk about toe stops because some people still seem a little confused about how toe stops, how to put in toe stops. I'm not going to say like um, how to use toe stops. We're not going to talk about how to stop, um, techniques on stopping, all that kind of stuff. I'm talking about the actual equipment of toe stops. So normally when people get um, their first pair of skates, you know, you're not going to spend $500 or $1,000 over a brand new pair of skates. You're probably going to end up with like the bare bones, um, beginner skates, and they'll get you through. And a lot of us will try to steer you in the direction of a decent skate um, that you, that won't break, hopefully won't break. Um, I mean, any skate can break depending on the stress you put on it and the type of skating you're doing. But um, there are certain skates that their design or the materials they're, ma they're made out of will break before others. So I'm going to start out with um, what's called a fixed toe stop or a bell toe stop. These are bolt-on toe stops. Um, this is an example of one. This is a um, an RS-1000 on a mystery plate. Um, so you see there's a, a bolt in there and that bolts right there in there in the, the plate and it has a bell shape. So that's why some people call it a bell stop. Um, this one is rubbery. There, um, some beginner skates come with a very plasticky toe stop. And so if you are doing um, toe stop drags, um, they tend to break and just not drag. Plastic tends to just slide, rubber tends to grab. So in most cases, we suggest to people not to do toe stop drags because it's not the most efficient way of uh, stopping. Also, as a new skater, balancing on one foot while drag dragging another foot is probably the last thing you want to do. So, side talk, I didn't mean to technique <laughs> police, but there we go. So, um, if you were like, oh, this toe stop is worn down, you can see there's no adjustment on these. Um, Maybe you want a slightly bigger toe stop, you can purchase different toe stops. The most popular is a SureGrip bullseye toe stop. It is the bell shape. Most of the time these don't come with the bolts. And in some cases I've come across some of these weird no-name plates that don't use a normal toe stop bolt. So make sure you hold on to that bolt if you have to switch it. Um, and like I said, these are non-adjustable. So when people go out and they buy brand new cute adorable toe stops, and then wonder why they don't fit into to their new skates is because most of them are going to end up being bolt-on when you first start out. Um, when you get to like, I think the rainbow rollers and the um, the beach bunnies and stuff, those have adjustable toe stops, so you should be able to get the cute toe stops. But with these, you tend to not really have a lot of options on cute toe stops outside of colors. Sure Grip has all kinds of colors. Um, but Grindstone just started offering um, bolt-on heart-shaped toe stops. So they are available. There's some glitter in there. It's so cute. So you can um, do your bolt on and have a heart and have some skate personality if you're into that kind of thing. Um, moving on to adjustable toe stops. Um, there is a huge pile of different types of adjustable toe stops. Um, if you get a beginner like Moxie um, skate or um, any beginner Rydell skate, um, sure grip, whatever, you tend to get these little adjustable toe stops. They're very tiny. You can see they're pretty thin. Um, this is the most popular, the Carrera, and then, um, is that backwards, Paradigm. Um, and they all come in kind of one size, and people will beat the shit out of these. Um, they're fine for starting out. They're actually not terrible. They're not the best, but they're not terrible. These will get you through. Um, and then when you go down and start to upgrade your toe stops, um, there are, these are the RXs, so they're very similar to the Paradigms, um, obviously not as thick, um, and then Bionics, and again, Bionics are kind of along the same route. Um, a lot of us tend to suggest, um, going for, sorry, this is Bionic, um, going for long stem, because most of the time when you adjust your toe stops, um, you don't want them pushed all the way up into your plate. But it also depends on the type of skating you're doing because uh, toe stop adjustment is very um, personal to people sometimes. So like, 
if you're doing derby, you'll probably have your toe stop lower. Um, if you're doing different types of dancing or um, trail skating, you might want them higher. So um, on the level of derby toe stops, um, these are still common with um, non-derby people, but this is called a gumball. Um, this is a short stem, so this, and obviously you have the thickness of that rubber to bring it down more, but as it wears, you're going to get shorter and shorter toe stops that you can't adjust. So in the case of this gumball, this is a long stem and it's adjustable and it's in a derby skate. Um, I'll have more flexibility of adjusting this. Um, and I'll show you how to decide where your adjustments, uh, where you want your adjustments. So now um, Gumball offers these in colors. So I had gotten um, purple and I think they have different um, softnesses on these. I think this is like an 88, so it's pretty soft. Um, in Derby, we do not use our toe stops for stopping. We use them for running. We do Derby stops where we end up on our toe. And there's just a lot of like, we use our toe stops, but we don't drag the toe stops, if that makes sense. Um, what I tend to use on my personal derby skates are the Super Balls. These are the same company as Gumball, which, are they still Green Monster? I don't know. So these are really big. I use these for derby. They're like freaking shoes on the end of your skates and you can run on them. You run on them, and it's very it's very stable. So if I end up on my toe stops, which I tend to um, block a lot, so I don't move a whole lot. So I like these toe stops because they hold me pretty steady. Um, also, side note, this is a Powerdyne Moon Walker toe stop. See, it's smaller. They don't offer these colors anymore. It's old, but um, if you can see. The size of where the toe stop area is on this plate it's very wide compared to some other skates so the adjustments on your toe stops will be slightly different and again I'll show you how to adjust your toe stops um, to work for what you need so say you're just like I don't use toe stops or I want to dance and I just I'm gonna skip the whole toe stop business completely, or you're trying to transfer from toe stops to no toe stops. So I'm personally a toe stop user and I can't dance. So I'm trying to like, maybe I can learn to dance eventually, but let me try to help myself a little with equipment. It's not always working, but we'll try. Um, so this is, uh, what do they call it? The Lone Star toe, toe stop. It's a mini toe stop. And obviously it's very thick and I have it pushed all the way in. So that way, while I'm trying to break myself of using toe stops and I start to tilt forward and I hit the toe stop, I won't just eat the floor. Um, there are better recovery techniques that you don't have to use a crutch. So a lot of people have learned to just go straight to no toe stops and no problem. I am not that person. So I will suggest the, um, these are grindstone Lone Stars. Um, I don't know how I ended up with pink. I think they were out of everything else. Um, and then I had put some jam plugs in these skates. So with the jam plugs, um, it's always important to keep jam plugs if you're skating in a skating rink because most rinks will require you have some type of protection so you don't scratch their floor. Um, some people will be like, oh, I don't need a, a plug but it's, it's not for yourself, it's not for your ego, it's to help the rake keep their floor undamaged. And they have to spend tens of thousands of dollars to repair the urethane and the wood on their floor whenever somebody takes a big chunk out of it. So just for, you know, being a good human, please use jam plugs when you're indoors. Um, that is, this is made by Paradigm, it's one of the little intro. Also, depending on what your plate is, since this has an adjustable toe stop, this is um, made for adjustable toe stop holes. They have ones made for um, bolt-in plates. So you have to make sure you know what kind of toe stop housing you have in your plate. Um, another type of plug I have, um, again, I was using these on these skates, but these are called iris and they're rubberized. It's kind of like a toe stop. So 
again, when you bump on the ground, you're not going to have straight, pla like these are straight plastic. You're not gonna have straight plastic hitting the ground. Like sometimes it's one of those things like dragging a fork across your teeth. I don't want to hear the or feel that plastic touching the ground. I, I, I like having a nice soft bounce <laughs> than not to feel like I'm going to damage the floor. Again, this is for indoor skating. Um, and now we're going to talk about how to adjust your toe stops. Okay, so first, um, all of the skates that I showed before all have these um, the adjustment, um, the tightening Allen screw here. Um, some, I don't have any, do I? Some skates have a toe stop nut. I don't have any skates with a toe stop nut right here, sitting right here right now. So I can't show you. But um, obviously, if you have a toe stop nut, um, you'd have to loosen up that nut. And then you would um, unscrew the toe stop so it like lengthens. So what you want to do, again, this is depending on what you're doing, what's your comfort level. So this is about three thing, fingers high. So that's, this is a good like derby height. Um, you could still run around, like you don't have to put too much effort to put your toe stop forward. Um, and then you're like, I'm going to run. And then you run. Um, again, there is pe there are people that tend to put their toe stops all the way up and that's fine. Um, one thing to remember is that you're never balancing directly on your toe stop. That is not what you're doing. This puts stress into the nose of your plate and can crack it, especially if you have a thrust plate or um, any other type of nylon plate. And yes, um, aluminum plates can crack and break, um, especially from stress like this. What you're going to be doing is making a cute little tripod with your wheels. So one, two, three. These, these three things are on the ground right now to keep you stable. So with these all on the ground, you're gonna be able to stand still and not roll away. When you're standing like this, you have all that stress on your ankle, especially if you have a speed boot. The ankle, all the ankle support is in your body, in the ligaments, in the muscles in your body. Um, relying on high top boots for ankle stability is a bit of a crutch. And you can still break an ankle in a high top boot. So you might think, oh, I'm completely safe. D uh, no, not, not completely. So again, this is, you always have a tripod situation with your toe stop on the ground. So you can adjust this either way, but as long as you're not sitting on the toe stop. With these skates, I am not using these for um, derby. I'm just kind of futzing around with them. And again, trying to get myself to not be as reliant on toe stops when I'm not in derby skates. So these are like pushed all the way up. So as soon as I like tilt forward, I'm not going to um, eat the ground. But because of this toe stop area being so wide and having a wide toe stop, it's still close to the ground. So I still have like four fingers, three and a half fingers from a flat surface. So I would say like, if I really cared I would get a very narrow, like, this is the toe stop that came with the Carrera. Put the Carrera back in there, or, I don't know, I'd figure out something else. But I kind of like how this is so far. Obviously, like, green and orange. So, I'm sticking with this for a while. Anyway, if you have any random questions at any time, just send me a message or um, ask in other places. Do more research. This is literally just a quick crash course in toe stops. Duh.